Today on ATV News, we'll talk about the latest hazing incident, Bruce Jenner, and Abercrombie & Fitch's new hiring policy. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Sarah Schroeder Nahum. And I'm Jonathan Hunter. ATV News starts right now. Baltimore police say that West Baltimore resident Freddie Gray should have received medical attention two weeks ago when he was arrested. While in the police car, Gray was not seatbelted, which is a policy violation. Gray suffered from a severe spinal cord injury during his arrest and later died in the area hospital. Gray's death has sparked a week of protests in Baltimore. It's still unclear as to why he was arrested and how he was injured. The six officers involved in the case have been suspended. Bruce Jenner revealed his true gender identity to Diane Sawyer in an exclusive ABC interview this past Friday. Former Olympian and current reality TV star said that he has a soul of a female body. After battling these feelings throughout his whole life, Jenner has come to terms with his transgender identity and plans to become involved in transgender activism. Let's go to Andy and Jalen with entertainment. Hello, this is Andy Luani. And I'm Jalen Fairborn Chapman, and this is ATV Entertainment. Former Everybody Loves Raymond child actor Sawyer Sweeten died on Thursday at the age of 19 after taking his own life at a family member's home in Texas. Sweeten was best known for his role as young Jeffrey Barone on Everybody Loves Raymond, where he starred alongside Madeline and his twin brother Sullivan. The siblings portrayed the children of Ray Romano's character on the CBS sitcom between 1996 and 2005. Our thoughts are with his family at this time. Miley Cyrus and Patrick Schwarzenegger have called it quits for good. The six-month relationship hit a rough patch after Patrick was caught getting a little handsy with his ex-girlfriend while they were on spring break. In addition, Miley was spotted kissing not one, but two people at a wild bash last weekend. Sources say that Patrick has not been coping well since the picture surfaced. This week, Robert Downey Jr. let Krishnan and Guru Murthy know what time it was. During his media junket tour promoting the upcoming Avengers movie, the British journalist decided to drudge up feelings from Downey's past. The reporter tried to pry into Downey's relationship with his father and his past drug abuse, prompting Downey to walk out. The interview garnered a collective eye squint from the public at the unnecessary nosiness. Downey shot back with an Instagram post with a Diane Sawyer caption, a corrective experience with legitimate journalism. <laughs> got him. <laughs> it was time to take her ring off, but now she's got a brand new one to put on. Tina Knowles is now Tina Lawson. She recently tied the knot with Dynasty actor Richard Lawson on a yacht. The new family continued to show that they loved an all-white wedding, where guests looked amazing and danced the night away, with family members like Beyonce, Solange, Richard's daughter Bianca, and friends like Kelly Rowland. But we have Blue Ivy to thank for all of this. Miss Tina said the first time they considered marriage was when Blue said she liked Richard. So cute. And we wish them so much happiness. I'm Jalen Fairborn Chapman. And I'm Andy Luani, and this has been ATV Entertainment. A teacher's aide in Montgomery County has been charged with the sex abuse of a minor. Investigators say that Robert Otis III was involved in an inappropriate relationship with a 14-year-old at Loiterman Middle School. Police say the two would meet under a stairwell out of security cameras view, where Otis would kiss and touch on the student. Otis faces one count of sex abuse of a minor and three counts of a third-degree sex offense. He is set to be back in court on May 22nd. Now we go to Abby with the latest in politics. Hello everyone, I'm Abby Weaver, here with the latest in politics. Though Hillary's run for presidency is still in its early stages, her campaign is already under fire. On Thursday, the New York Times reported that Clinton's Family Foundation received millions of dollars from donors tied to a Russian uranium company during her time as Secretary of State. The Clinton campaign scrambled Thursday to push back, slamming the Times report as speculative. Bill Clinton was also in the headlines Friday when Bloomberg News reported that he is leaving his paid position as honorary chancellor at Loria International Universities. Loria Education INC is the world's largest chain of for-profit colleges, and this year marks the fifth year Clinton has worked with the corporation. In other news, we, the week also proved to be a big one for Loretta Lynch. On Thursday, the Senate confirmed that Lynch would replace Attorney General Eric Holder, the longest-serving member of the President's Cabinet. The Senate voted 56-43 to confirm Lynch, the U.S. attorney in Brooklyn, who will now stand as the first black woman to head the Department of Justice. That's all for politics. I'm Abby Weaver. Thanks for watching. 
Thanks, Abby. Three men were found guilty in the Florida A&M hazing incident, which resulted in the death of a former drum major, Robert Champion. Champion died in November of 2011 after a band hazing ritual where drum majors get beaten while running up and down the aisle of a school bus. Benjamin McName, Aaron Golson, and Daryl Colonel were convicted of manslaughter and hazing with the result of death. Getting a job at Abercrombie & Fitch will now be a lot easier for average looking people. The clothing store is no longer hiring based on body type and physical attractiveness. The retailer said that in July they will stop sexualized marketing, meaning no more shirtless models outside of the store for special events. The company says they are now focused on hiring nice, smart, optimistic people with a strong worth ethic. This move comes after years of criticism and a decline in sales. Now we go to Arun Rahman with the latest in the sports world. Hi, I'm Arun Rahman and this is ATV Sports. The NBA playoffs started last week and it looks like this year will be another entertaining fight for the championship. Highlights include the Golden State Warriors beating the New Orleans Pelicans, the Washington Wizards leading the Toronto Raptors, and the San Antonio Spurs winning over the Los Angeles Clippers. Spurs power forward and coach Tim Duncan and Greg Popovich earned their 150th w playoff win together, the most by any player slash coach duo in NBA history. Dallas Cowboys defensive end Greg Hardy has been suspended without pay for the first 10 games of the 2015 season due to violating the NFL's personal conduct policy. The suspension resulted from a two-month investigation by the league into Hardy's domestic violence incident with his former girlfriend last year. Hardy is eligible to play again in Week 12 against the, his former team, the Carolina Panthers. Former Baltimore Ravens running back Ray Rice attended a Rutgers Scarlet Knights spring game Friday night and met with the team at the request of coach Kyle Ford. This was the first time Rice has been back to his former university after he was suspended by the NFL for punching his fiance at the time and now wife last year. Rice's intention for meeting of Rutgers was to advise the players not to make the mistakes he did in the future. Rice is currently a free agent. I'm Arun Rahman and this has been ATV Sports. Thanks, Arun. A Columbia University student is suing the school after they failed to protect him after he was accused of rape. Paul Nungesser says a female classmate, Emma Sulkowitz, publicly defamed him by calling him a serial rapist. Sulkowitz carried a mattress around campus as a form of protest which gained national and international attention. Nungesser says a Columbia website stated as a fact that he raped Sulkowitz, but authorities had rejected the case. Nungesser says life on campus was unbearable after he received repeated harassment on campus. Let's go to Brandon and Lila to see what's happening in the world of finance. Thanks, Sarah. I'm Brandon Kramen. And I'm Lila Nasser here at the latest in finance news. On Friday, Comcast announced that it was dropping its $45 billion bid for Time Warner Cable. The announcement comes after U.S. regulators expressed concerns over the deal. Agencies like FCC, SEC, and DOJ argued that the deal would give Comcast an unfair advantage in both TV and Internet services. This coming Monday, Apple is reporting their second quarter earnings. Their Q2 has been very strong. Estimates show that they have sold 55 million iPhones, 15 million iPads, 5 million Macs, and an estimated 5 million Apple Watches. All that equates to just over 50 billion. Apple is currently valued around 750 billion. Now, I'll admit, those watches do look nifty, but I'm not so sure about the price tag. Fair point, but I don't think the price is as bad as you think. The Apple Watch actually starts at $350. In fact, I actually pre-ordered mine just two weeks ago, and I'm expecting to receive it in early June. Well, you'll have to show off your watch to me as soon as you get it. In the meantime, though, let's talk about airline tickets, specifically airline ticket prices. Despite the fact that airlines have saved $3.4 billion over the past year, airline ticket prices have only dropped 66 cents. This is mostly due to the fact that high demand for air travel remains high. The airline industry's extra savings, however, are being put to good use. According to CNN Money, airlines have been using that extra cash to invest in new airplanes, redecorating terminals, and hiring new staff. Well, that isn't good for my summer travels. In market news, the Dow is up 21.45 points, NASDAQ 36.02, and the S&P is up 4.76 points. Well, that's the latest in finance news. I'm Brandon Kramen. And I'm Lila Nasser. Thanks for watching. In other news, 400 fish were killed after a toxic chemical mix-up at the Texas State Aquarium this past week. The poisonous chemical, hydroquinone, was accidentally leaked into the water during a parasite treatment. The chemical containers were mislabeled, according to the aquarium directors. 
The parents of Michael Brown have filed a wrongful death suit against the city of Ferguson and former police officer Darren Wilson. Brown's attorney says the new lawsuit will bring light to new forensic evidence that was overlooked during the first trial. The lawsuit alleges that Wilson used offensive language when instructing Brown to get on the sidewalk, which escalated the tension. Also, the suit states that Brown had his hands up and was surrendering while he was killed. The suit stands at $75,000. And now, the latest in the world news with Bailey and Sarah. Welcome to ATV World News. I'm Sarah Kravitz. And I'm Bailey Edelstein. Around 2.15 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, a 7.5 magnitude earthquake hit Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal, and affected surrounding regions of India and Pakistan. The Associated Press reported the earthquake's force caused an avalanche at Mount Everest, killing eight and causing dozens of injuries. The overall death toll of the earthquake is unconfirmed. Associated Press reported approximations of 449 dead in Nepal and 30 dead in neighboring countries. On Wednesday in Hong Kong, construction workers unearthed 43 fossilized dinosaur eggs during a roadside repair. Hong Kong is known as the city with the largest number of dinosaur eggs in the world. In 2004, Guinness World Records awarded the self-proclaimed home of dinosaurs for having the largest collection of dinosaur eggs in its museum. Currently, researchers are working to determine the specific species of the discovered eggs. On Friday, Italian counterterrorism police surged across Italy and Sardinia, arresting suspects allegedly tied to a terror cell that plotted to bomb the Vatican in 2010. According to Mario Carta, an officer involved in the investigation, said wiretapped conversations were heard mentioning a big jihad in Italy. Spokesperson Federico Lombardi says the Vatican remains unconcerned. On Thursday, the Armenian church held a ceremony near Yerevan to honor over one million Armenians who were killed during World War I in massacres and deportations carried out by the Ottoman Turks. The ceremonies commemorated the 100th anniversary of the killings and proclaimed those killed in the name of their faith and their homeland as martyrs. This has been ATV World News. I'm Sarah Kravitz. And I'm Bailey Edelstein. Thanks for a great year. Thanks, Bailey and Sarah. And for ice cream lovers, there is no need to worry. Despite recalls from two ice cream companies, the FDA and the CDC say ice cream is still safe to eat. Federal officials have found no link to listeria illness in either Bluebell Creameries of Texas and Jenny's Splendid Ice Cream of Ohio. There has been a rampant outbreak of HIV cases in Roll County in Indiana. 142 people have been tested positive for the disease with 136 confirmed cases according to the CDC. The state health leaders and the CDC held a news conference this past Friday to discuss the implications on the community and ways to treat the epidemic. Now let's look at the weather forecast with our weather woman, Emma Clare. Thanks, Sarah. This is Emma Clare for ATV Weather. While the academic calendar might say final season, the temperature is saying spring. After a high of 59 on Sunday, you can prepare for a warm week of spring weather. On Monday, we have a high of 62 and a low of 47, moving up to a high of 68 and a low of 47 on Tuesday. Wednesday is likely to reach the 70s, and Thursday, the high 60s with a 40% chance of rain. The sun comes out for a weekend in the 70 to 75 range, so don't forget to step outside and relax from all your end of the year studying. This has been Emma Claire with your weekly weather report. Have a great summer vacation. Thanks, Emma Claire. The classic comic sequel, The Dark Knight Rises, is returning with a, its third installment called Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. It's expected to be released this fall. Now we go to What's Up AU with Daniela and David. The semester is winding down and summer is on its way. I'm Daniela Burson. And I'm David Allison Drini. What's up AU? Monday is the last day of classes and the start of final study period. No classes will be meeting after Monday and 24-hour quiet hours will be enforced in all dorms. Come out to the quad on Tuesday night to have snacks and party with your friends at the final perk. The movie-themed event will feature a red carpet, trivia challenge, and photo booth. And since we're in the home stretch, here's a reminder that dorms will close for the summer on May 6th at noon. Graduation will follow on the 9th and the 10th. That's what's up with AU this week. Have a great summer. And see you next semester. Well, it sounds like AU is going to have a busy week with finals coming up, but I'm glad the school is doing something to help the students relax. Yeah, I'm very excited about the free food Tuesday. I will definitely be out there. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> 
That's all that we have for today for ATV News. Thanks for watching. I'm Jonathan Hunter. And I'm Sarah Schrader-Nahum. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a great week, AU.